All right, for segment two today, I'm going to have either two or three videos in this. It depends on how this goes. I'm not totally sold on the third one yet. In the first video, we're just going to, in this one right here, we're just going to look at what are dimensions and how do you create dimensions. Heathen Dog is going to be doing a lot of rolling. And uh, Francois Dossier actually said in chat much earlier that this book is really good for game masters, maybe not so much so for players. I think he's right because it's a, it's a megaverse builder. It's a world builder book. And a lot of times you don't need players to do that. With that said, in the second video, there are a couple of OCCs in here we can take a look at that uh, might be interesting for players. So we'll take a look at that in just a moment. We welcome all people, regardless of background, belief, or identity, to play tabletop role-playing games. Let's engage our imaginations, pull a veil over reality, and immerse ourselves in fantastic worlds. Don't be a disruption at the table, and always remember, it's just a game. The charity we support is the Wounded Warrior Project, a national, nonpartisan organization whose mission is to honor and empower wounded warriors. Please refer to the description below for the link to where you can make your hopefully tax-deductible donation. Join us Thursday and Saturday evenings on twitch.tv slash Legion of Myth to watch Heathen Dog and his team of dirty casuals play multiplayer games for your mockery and enjoyment. Here on our YouTube channel, you can watch these game-related segments live every Sunday at 1 p.m. Central Time, or check out the Friday Night Stream, where our panel of guests opine, comment, and editorialize on the TTRPG hobby as a whole. Please leave us a comment with your thoughts and experiences. If you enjoy our gaming content, please be sure to subscribe to Legion of Myth. Okay, that music is starting to drive me crazy. <laughs> The more I hear it, the more I'm like, okay, okay. It was funny at first. Now it's just... <laughs> All right, so there we go. We got our Megaverse Builder, and uh, I have no notes today. Mr. Notecard, what did you call me? Captain Notecard? Yep. Captain Notecard does not have any notes. So we're just going to scroll through it. We're going to talk about certain aspects of it and talk about what's in here. Now, first thing I want to say is for a game master, if you want to do, and this is a term I've been saying a lot recently, if you want to do a sliders type campaign, this book is perfect. Uh, I can't remember if I said it on stream or not, so I'm going to say it again, you know, pardon the redundancy if, uh, if I am. Comparing this book to Transdimensional TMNT, which is one of my favorite books, uh, Transdimensional TMNT is better for time travel, well, because it includes time travel, uh, but this book is leaps and bounds better than Transdimensional TMNT when it comes to dimensional stuff. So I would actually default to this book even in my after the bomb games, if I want to do something like that is very well done. Very once again, it's another one of those small books that's very dense and somehow you weirdos are slowly converting me over to riffs, I think, because I'm starting to like these riffs books more and more. Uh, but it's a very well done book. If you're a game master for riffs and you want to do something, I don't want to do phase world, but I want to do something out of the ordinary. This book is absolutely fantastic. So let's, uh, let's scroll down. Hey, a good table of contents in there. So, it starts off with wide. Can I not zoom in? I cannot zoom in. Okay, well, that sucks. Nope, can't zoom in. All right, well, we'll figure that out later. Apparently, present mode in... Uh, I bet you I can zoom in now, yeah. Well, I can't do present mode. You're going to have to see all the nonsense on the side. So it starts off with a good... Uh, actually, a really good write-up on why and how you could do uh, dimensional travel. I'm not going to uh, quote it here, but it is... Uh, it's a very good forward. If I have uh, one complaint about this book, this book goes back to kind of the palladium thing where I think it could have used a better proofread. Uh, there, there's some not inconsistent. There's, there, well, there's some writing in here that could have been done a little bit better. The information is great. Don't get me wrong, but uh, there could have been a better editing pass for some of this, but uh, un unclear. I really had a lot of, uh, or a few unclear paragraphs and sentences. Now, First of all, what are pocket dimensions? Well, pocket dimensions, or, I'm sorry, uh, types of dimensions. Where is that? Yeah, dimensional physics. There are types of dimensions. So the first one is a pocket dimension. It's really just a dimension within a dimension. And I, ha I had a note written down for that, but I think it's uh, Hades is one. Here, it says down here. Oh, it says over here. There we go. Yeah, Hades, Deval, Wormwood, and the Palladium world itself, you know, the Palladium fantasy world, are all pocket dimensions. Interesting. So you can travel to one, but it's a little difficult because uh, mostly because it's already within a dimension. So you basically have to pop into a dimension. It's like Lithoso inside South Africa. 
Okay, you got to go through South Africa first to get to it, right? I suppose unless you're flying in. Then you have infinite dimensions. This is kind of like the real world dimension, so to speak. It's just, it's infinite. It is its own thing. And some examples of that are uh, the three galaxies, Rifts, Earth, of course, and Heroes Unlimited. Now, the Heroes Unlimited universe isn't the real universe. Obviously, it's not because there are superheroes there and there aren't superheroes here. It is an alternate reality sort of uh, infinite universe. And then you have parallel dimensions. Parallel dimensions are ninjas and super spies. It's Earth, but it's tweaked. Uh, as she says, it's Heroes Unlimited Earth. So, okay, yeah, this is the difference. This is Heroes Unlimited Earth, right? So what's the difference between Heroes Unlimited Universe in terms of dimension? Well, parallel dimensions are the same as, uh, as the current world or whatever setting you're running, but it always has a little difference. This is the Sliders reference. Yeah, yeah, the whole Azure Gate Bridge thing from, from Sliders. They were really close. Yep. In one time, the only difference they could find was it wasn't the Golden Gate Bridge. It was the Azure Gate Bridge. That was right. the only difference they could find in the whole episode between the world they came from and the world they were on. And they were like, dang it. Well, we got to keep trying. Personally, I would have stayed. We're like, ah, <laughs> close enough, right? <laughs> this is fine. But hey, whatever. Uh, can you start that comment from Darius28? We'll get to it later. Uh one about the games. Uh, what, what I thought was very pointy here is systems failure Earth. It's a perfect example. It's it's our Earth, right? But in this one, why 2K went haywire? So th that that shows a good parallel dimension. All right. Central Nexus. Central Nexus is, well, Rift's Earth. It's also Phase World. Now, every dimension has one or more Central Nexus. Nexi? Nexuses? Uh, and they can be subtle or they could be blatant. In our universe, it's Rift's Earth. It's Rift, blatant. Just like, wah, wah, wah. You know? Everybody comes here from every other dimension because it's so simple, and we'll get to how and why it's simple in a little bit. But, uh, you know, Phase World is another one. That's That one's definitely central because what is the main city called there, Heathen Dog? I'm sorry, what? I was, what reading, is, I was reading chat. What is the main city called? In? A phase World. Oh, oh, uh... They called the center or center city? Yeah, center. It's called center. Yeah. Central Nexus. All right. Now, the next thing we have to understand, and all these terms are going to come up a little bit later when we create, when Heathen Dog rolls a million times and uh, we create our dimension. Dimensional fabric. So, dimensional fabric is how strong it is to break through, to get into that dimension. Well, guess how strong the dimensional fabric for Rift's Earth is? Paper? It's tissue paper. Yeah. <laughs> It's weak dimensional fabric. Other ones, on the other hand, are very difficult to break into. And what it does, it modifies the role for you to try to get there. Sure. Also hazards and so forth. So you have weak dimensional fabric. Uh, okay, there they are. Weak, permeable. Hopefully you guys can read that. If not, it's strong and impenetrable. It's not actually impenetrable. But it's really difficult and good luck uh trying to get in and there are usually only a couple of locations and he says here yeah one to four locations where the barrier is weak enough to teleport through so they can funnel you if it's a if it's a bad place they can funnel you in so good luck and dimensional energy matrix we're going to read this one uh experienced dimensional travelers with scientific backgrounds have discovered that dimensions resonate at certain frequencies this frequency determines the dimensions energy oops the energy, energy matrix. the energy matrix is simply the ability to transfer energy energy is typically transferred through the use of subatomic par particles called electrons in dimensions like rifts earth these subatomic particles have a negative charge so the energy matrix is considered negative again this will come up later when we look at uh the universe imagine you're you're running your glitter boy yeah glitter boy right all technological it's got electronics and components in there it's powered and you bring it to a powered universe or sorry a positive universe because remember we're a negative universe how well do you think that thing's going to work it's going to short out yeah it's not going to work at all right no could short out too yeah you're right um so that's that's the point. There are different types of universes, positive, negative, universal, neutral. I think there are a couple others, if I remember correctly. Uh, but that matters. All of a sudden, you go to universe. This Hey, we're back on Earth. This is great. But the Borg can't move. He just falls over. Kaboom. Uh, what? <laughs> and he immediately starts dying. 
and he immediately starts dying. Uh, they have rules for that, but yeah. So those are things to consider. I thought that was a neat, neat addition to the dimensional concept. Like electrons can flow basically in terms of they can be positrons, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, is this right here? Uh, let's say this includes all kinds of powerful reactors like nuclear fusion, antimatter. This would even affect fuller partial partial conversion cyborgs, causing their mechanical bodies to cease to function or work at greatly diminished capacity. It also depends on how strong this influence is. But since most have organic components, it would take two to six hours before the cyborgs' life support systems gave out. Yeah. Oh, that's a long time. Two to six hours. Hold on uh, to figure out a way out of a dimension that that you may not know how you got into in the first place. Good luck, brother. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, are you ready to start rolling dice, Heathen Dog? I am. Okay, we are going to start rolling up a dimension for Heathen Dog because that that's really the main piece of information you need to know. So let's create one randomly. Of course, you can go through this list and make your own. Of course, you can even do things that are not even on this list. But we want to roll randomly here because it's fun. So, yep. all right, let's, let's how, how, what type of dimension do you have? Okay, infinite, parallel, or pocket. Let's find out. 33. 33. Well, you infinite. have an infinite dimension. So Woo! we don't have to worry about the pocket dimension size. Okay, primary medium. Go ahead and roll again. Okay. 34. 34. Liquid fluid. A fluid fills the dimension. Any land masses, islands, planets, or stars that are found in the dimension are found in small, empty pockets. Some wow. force such as gravity or magic would keep the fluid at bay. Uh, the fluid can be organic or non-organic. If organic in nature, life may actually be found in the fluid. Regardless of the temperature, the fluid remains in liquid form. Does this remind you of Spelljammer? No, it reminds me of uh, Star Trek Voyager. Fluidic Why space. Oh, they have okay. a dimension called fluidic space. That's right. That is true. Fluidic space, yeah. I, I thought a spell jammer within this one, because even though the phlogiston is more fire than water, it was that idea that the, the solar systems existed within these the crystal shells or within the shells, and that's kind of what this is representing here. Just it's fluid instead of uh, fire. All right, so he's got a, a fluid galaxy, so our universe, so we're going to have to figure out how to fly through that. Uh, where's the next step? I don't think it's here. Yeah. Do, 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 do. Okay, secondary dimensional medium. All right, roll again. Okay. 36. All right, 36. Do, do, do. Multiple planetary land masses or flat worlds. Oh, flat earther. Oh, yay. These are, <laughs> these are massive planetary sized platforms of land and atmosphere that measure millions of miles in size. That's wow. not planetary size if it's millions of miles in size. Well, technically, I mean, if you. If you, you know, put it into a globe, it might be similar to Earth size, but flattened out. Eh. Okay. They can be separated by thousands or millions of miles of space or whatever the primary element may be, like flat planets are clustered relatively close together. A unique set of physics. Yeah, okay. A unique set of physics, right? <laughs> Keeps yeah. inhabitants from falling over the edge or not. <laughs> I love that. Personally, not. in my universe, a giant turtle. There you go. Four turtles walking in a circle. No, 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 no. It's 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 one giant turtle, and on the back of the giant turtle is four elephants, and on the back of the four elephants is the flat world. <laughs> there you go. All and right, Rinswin. And, and it's a fluid universe, so the turtle is swimming through space. Exactly. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> In most cases, only one side, top or bottom, is inhabitable. Well, we don't like Australia, so it won't be the bottom. No, not going to be bad. Plus, you know, I don't want to smell elephant butt, so that's not happening. Yeah. So. And and uh, most, we have a lot of viewers from Australia, so I have to apologize now. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> where is it? Uh, different life forms may also dominate different parts of the floating planetary plates. Small clusters of island-sized land masses may also exist near or away from the flat worlds, and from a distance may resemble an asteroid belt. Islands may range from 200 to 1,200 miles. In size, may have an atmosphere and life forms, or maybe nothing more than lifeless platforms of rock and mineral or ice. So, what, so we've got our fluid universe, sure, and then we have these little bubbles that fit solar systems. And the solar systems are made up of <laughs> flat, flat planets. Yeah, beautiful. It's beautiful. A cartographer's dream. Yeah, you think it's, about it. You no easy. longer have to have to convert all of your measurements from a circular globe to a flat map. It's mm -hmm. all just flat map. Yep, it's great. Uh, the point of this role here is that might be like, okay, this is just weird. Well, first of all, when you're talking on the scales of this, does it really matter? Not really. 
Yeah. Uh, secondly, it gives it some flavor and some atmosphere. I mean, there are some really crazy things that we might get to in a moment uh, that you can have going on. You can have completely reversed, and, and I think we'll get to it, but just in case we don't, um, you can have completely reversed elements, like oceans of fire, but volcanoes of water. There, it can add a lot of interest. Now, if that is that too much for you? Whoa, that's getting a little too crazy. Well, then tone it down. You can do what you want. We're doing completely random here just to show what's out there. But this really gets the brain juices flowing and, and for the purposes of I want to make something weird, but not not comically weird, not clown yeah. shoes. I mean, if, if you don't like volcanoes that spew ocean water, then then you could tone that down to be like Yellowstone geysers. Yeah, it's fine. All right. Uh, what is your dimensional fabric oh, yeah. uh, density? It better be impenetrable. I don't want. I don't want people messing up my my beautiful disc world. Damn it. Ten. <laughs> we everybody's messing up his beautiful disc world. Well, man. everybody everybody says come and ride the turtle. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> so it's like yeah, dimensional yep. jabronis just coming around throwing their throwing their waste everywhere coke bottles can you roll a d4 throat. for me please a d4 you say yeah oh, i didn't know i was gonna have a d4 hang on yeah i didn't know either but uh you'll probably need a d6 at some point as well all right uh d8 that's not gonna do it yeah d8 divided by two another d8 god damn it <laughs> i didn't prepare him for this one he didn't prepare me okay i got it all right four <laughs> You really hate this. You are Rift's Earth, sir. You are so easy to get to. 1d4 times 5. Is... bonus? Yep. To dimensional Shit. teleport or Rift to it. <laughs> That's Everybody's crazy. popping in. Everybody's coming, coming in. in. They don't even mean it. They're, 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 they, they, just, they just walked into a clearing one day and they walked out of it and like, where am I? I'm on Discworld. Oh, no. <laughs> All right. Uh, go ahead and roll for magic level. All right, is that another... Oh, percentile. We're back to percentile. Oh, okay. All right. 92. Oh, geez. You got lots of magic, I think. Damn it. Or null magic. I don't know. Nope. High magic energy. Few dimensions can match the raw power of having a high magic level. In these dimensions, the ley lines seem to surge with the life of their own. Oh, and when you, we talk about the ley line uh, maelstroms and so forth, oof, Great. or dimensional maelstroms, this is you. you got a fun world, sir. Uh, seem to have life their own and are easily visible during the day and from orbit. Yep. Ambient PPE great. is there for the taking and attracts all kinds of creatures and magic yeah, users. Get off my lawn! <laughs> Damn it! They, they just come to steal your magical energy. It's my universe. Stay you, away. You're an oasis in the dimensional maelstrom or uh, megaverse. Uh, high magic energy also affects in its inhabit or the inhabitants, making them MDC creatures. So, hey, hey, there's a benefit there. Now you're an MDC creature and are people reliant on magic. Random rift activity is common occurrence that takes place whenever the ley line energy surges as well as random interval inter intervals. Oh, my God. 3D6 times a year. Holy. Uh, nine, tw uh, 12. 12 times a year. <laughs> Just uh, Every just month. Every <laughs> full moon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what happens. Random rift activity. Not There's only can random, random rift happens every month, it's not random. It's well, it's tw just 12 times a year. Maybe it's 12 times in one month when the when the fluids are at high sanction. <laughs> okay, now I'm rolling my D100. Oh, oh God. Uh, when you run across the room to pick it up. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what the number is. <laughs> not only can random uh, what is a, a rift run throughout that say few, if any, rituals have to be performed due to the abundance of ambient PPE. So ritual magic is now... Eh, We'll just do it. Yeah, whatever. We just do You're it. Poor turtles, man. You know everybody's trying to you know, put a lasso around those things and you know ride them. The, and, and as a matter of fact, the the fluid in the universe is concentrated PPE. <laughs> 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 Example. Well, hey, solar systems. It's just, why is our solar system averaging one centimeter of growth every year? It's because all the people coming in sucking out the liquid. Yeah. Uh, all right, so examples of dimensions with high magic energy are Wormwood, Phase World, and Three Galaxies. So, and I think that makes sense. Yeah. By the way, you're only you're just slightly below super high magic Rift's Earth. Great. That's one hundred percent. Yeah. 
So one out of 100 dimensions has Rift's Earth magic. On average. On average. All right, let's uh, check out your energy matrix. Go ahead and roll percentile again. All right, here we go. This is going to be fun. <laughs> roll, 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 roll. Hang on, hang on. We're almost there. We're almost there. Uh, <laughs> 81. 81. 81. Neutral. No outside technology will function in this dimension. Period. End of statement. Only technology developed in this dimension will work at all. And there is none because we all we all do magic. So <laughs> I I I pity I pity the, the the four the poor Robotech Defense Force schmuck that gets <laughs> jumped into a, into my galaxy. Ha! Suck it, pig. <laughs> there you go. Uh, my poor Borg dead all right the flow of time let's find out how time all works right. here how does time work 51 51 upward oh, uh oh here we go 51 time flows faster oh so you you spend only 10 minutes here but you go home and everybody's dead well let's find out how fast yeah, for some reason, time in this dimension is out of sync with the rest of the megaverse. Travelers going to this dimension will experience a definite time acceleration. For every two days they spend in this dimension, only one day will have elapsed on Rift Earth. Oh, so it's the opposite. It's the mm -hmm. opposite of that. Okay. So if you were gone for 30 days, only 15 days will have passed on Rift Earth. That's not that, but come on. You could have done better than that. You could have made it 10 to 1. Uh, so if you were gone, oh yeah, we already did that. Uh, uh, creative game masters can increase this lag period. There you go. Oh, there you are. There you are. Uh, just keep it simple enough for you to keep track of. That's why I prefer the two for one approach. I like the one year for one day approach. Uh, makes math easy. <laughs> this may explain the spell time hole, as it incorporates a dimension with faster rate of time. Okay. I don't know. A spell named time hole just makes me nervous. Yeah. All right. Dimensional quirks. Um, dimensional hold on. Quirks. We have to see how many quirks you have first. Oh, okay. What do I got? Uh, oh, roll, roll a d4. Four times a, what? Roll a d4. Roll a d4. If you get four, we might not keep one. That. Good. <laughs> one quirk. Okay, roll. Percento. That's going to be bad. 97. Oh, God. Do, 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 do. 97. That's, well, 95 is dying dimension. So, what could 97 be? What? <laughs> What could be worse than that? <laughs> Forced evolution. Okay, that's oh. weird. weird. This is a rare trait in which the dimension has had an influence on how life evolved. Let's see, fluidic. Yeah, fluidic space, PPE everywhere. Okay, I get and, it. And, and flat Earth, okay. Sure, sure. As a sure, result, it is closely linked to the predominant life forms of the dimension, and dimensional travelers will find themselves being transformed into... Oh! Oh! Dimensional travelers will find themselves being transformed a close resemblance of the predominant life forms found in the dimension. That is awesome. You stay long enough, you'll be one of us. Right? One Doesn't that remind us. you, though, of transdimensional TMNT where uh, you could have that whole degradation? Fallout FEV virus? Okay. FEV virus. Forced evolution virus. Uh, the transportation... Oh, sorry. Uh, where we go? The, the transformation is instantaneous. instantaneous. And does not change the character's MDC, SDC hit points, attributes, or combat bonuses. It's just a physical change that adjusts the character. Oh, uh, oh, oh my God. Um, hey, Cronenberg Morty. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's just a physical change that adjusts the characters to the physics of that particular dimension while they are visiting. So maybe you get flippers to swim through the... No, that's actually outside the solar system, but still. Well, no, this it is actually great because if a, if a Borg comes here, their electronics will fail but their body will change yeah to the dominant life form of it's like my dimension becoming human yeah there it a is game game masters this is a good time to unleash your imagination have fun with the player characters please don't be clown shoes fun characters like juicers may find their biocomp as part of their metabolism Bionics and cybernetics may also change as part of the new life form, although they may look like grafted body parts, like a Frankenstein or machine parts turned into vegetation and so on. Again, Cronenberg. <laughs> uh, game masters can even rule that different races, such as elf, dwarf, human, are transformed into different species in the alien dimension. Forced evolution will not affect beings like true Atlanteans, who can't be transformed, of course. 
as well as all creatures of magic. Supernatural creatures like demons, devils, etc. can be affected, but can also try to resist and need to make a saving throw of 16, only PE bonuses are applicable, or higher to succeed. This is where things can be problematic. The forced evolution tends to give certain advantages to surviving in the new environment. Well, this makes sense, though. Let's be honest. You yep. have a crazy high magic setting, right? Yep. This kind of fits into place. Uh, like being able to breathe the new atmosphere. Uh, oh, sorry. It gives a certain advantages to surviving in the new environment, like being able to breathe the new atmosphere, surviving stronger gravity or defensive abilities such as that is the chameleon. These are traits that will help the character survive in this dimension, but those who are not affected may find themselves at a serious disadvantage. When visitors leave the dimension, they return to their normal and do not retain any traits, powers, or bonuses they might have had in their alien bodies. I don't know if I like that last part. I think it should be a slow change. But you know what? Uh, as survivability goes, mm -hmm. the the instant change is probably best. Plus, you can take away a lot a lot of uh, you know innate powers that that uh, you as a game master didn't like that this uh this one character <laughs> rct had and he had this power he abused all the time well now you don't have it <laughs> suck it you know and now that i think about it i think yeah instant is right because you turn into this creature instantaneously yeah. so why wouldn't you turn back because remember dimension isn't like some sort of genetic change or just magical difference you yeah. are going into a different reality Yes. So and I this could... reality is so high magic, it actually polymorphed you the moment yep. you went in to be one of us, to fit into itself. Challenge awesome. for folks in the comment section. Don't write a book because we won't be able to read it, but tell so far as to what Heathen Dogs rolled up, his little fluidic flatter dimension <laughs> with the the neutral uh was it neutral electronics yeah electronics no. and 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 this whole changes in give us show us your imagination tell us what people turn into here and maybe what they find doesn't have to be human i mean oh we, it shouldn't be human it shouldn't you know like the super magic fluidic space now it, it gave an example that oh if you want stars and actual air there's bubbles that has stars and planets you don't really need that in this universe, stars burn underwater in, in the fluidic PPE. Everyone can breathe it. It's pure magic. You can breathe PPE in this dimension. So, so you, to be, I'm only doing this to be pedantic because I agree with you. That is a way to go. In the yeah. pedantry of this, though, it did actually say that there is a, a, a bubble around the planet, or I use solar system, but or the planet where the person, or where you're not effective. The liquid's still outside. But what's to say it isn't a sea world? I, I don't yeah. have an issue with with you making it. Oh, yeah, yeah. We, we all breathe PPE here. We all we all have special gills that breathe in magic yeah. to to supply our bodies with the energy it needs rather than oxygen. That's fine, hundred percent fine. Uh, if you can star side ghosts uh, comment. Uh, so there we go. So again, type of dimension is infinite. Uh, primary dimensional medium is fluidic. Secondary dimensional medium for him, I already forgot what it was called, but it was just flat earth nonsense. Yep. Uh, density was weak. Magic level was high. I... Can, we, can we do D? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, D would be rips. I'm uh, just fair. under that. Fair. Uh, dimensional energy ma uh, matrix was neutral. neutral. Nothing works there. Yep. Time flow is faster. Faster. One at least. And dimensional quirks was uh, you're polymorphed. Yep. Well, you, you, you come in, you, you turn into whatever the species chat decides is the prevalent species in this universe. Since I was debating whether I should do this in the next video, but I'm going to do it now because we're going to spend a good amount of time on the shifter. So uh, let's knock this out now. So dimensional anomalies. You have dimensional maelstroms. These things are nasty. And I think it's this second paragraph or is it down here? Yeah, I think it's the second paragraph that I wanted to focus on. Uh, it's an unconventional storm that rages between dimensions. Totally okay. undetectable. It is only experienced when a person is traveling from one dimension to another, and in the very instance a traveler is between realities, the storm strikes. Sure. For a few brief seconds, typically one to four melee rounds, the character is surrounded by a vortex of wind and blue energy. The crackle of the energy can be heard all... We don't need the, the narrative of it. Victims feel slight electric tingle. So where, where's the game mechanics of it? Then as quickly as it appears, guns. 
If lucky, the unsuspecting traveler is ejected into the dimension that is his chosen destination. If lucky. Shaken and shaking from the cold. Though drenched in sweat, the individual feels frozen to the bone. It's like the original Stargate. Yeah, yeah, the, 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 yes, the Stargate, but before they put in the, the dampeners or whatever. Uh, uh, and weak. SDC or MDC, and as well as PPE by half. Reduced. Ooh. The unfortunate dimensional traveler finds himself in the same condition, but much worse off because he appears on an alien and probably unknown world in some other dimension that could be any, the, anywhere in the universe. You could be on Heathen Dog's Liquid World now. Yep. Snatched from his chosen path and flung by the maelstrom to a different place in time and reality. So chances uh, of, of meeting one of these things varies, and here's the, the rule of thumb down here. So, no ley line storm in the last five months or longer, 100% chance of a safe trip. So, we'll book your passages <laughs> after long after, after ley line storm. storm. Season. Yeah. yeah. But uh, now, if it's a ley line storm within three days, a 40% chance of a safe trip. That's yeah, it. Yeah, I'm not going. Yeah, not neither going. am I. Neither am I. I'm fine. <laughs> Unless I'm some sort of random explorer, which we'll talk about in the next video. So, yeah. Oh, let's do this. During a ley line storm. Hey, there's a ley line storm going on. That's fine. We'll go. We'll be fine. You have a 5% chance. What kind well, of dumb dumb is going to do that? That's just Darwin in action. Just let him go. <laughs> yeah, right. Let him go. Have yes. fun storming the castle. All right. Uh, detecting them. Dimensional maelstroms are perhaps the most difficult of dimensional phenomena to detect. We're not going to read the whole thing here. Again, this is an overview, not a deep dive. But uh, if you uh, shifters, this is why you want your shifter. Or as no. Keenan would probably say, NPC shifter. But you're going to want... Uh, this book is designed around shifters. I would actually say, if you're doing dimensional travel, not one dimension, but if you're having a campaign based around dimensional travel, if you really want to go all weird with this, you really do need... You probably need two shifters. And I, I know that like, Heathen Dog isn't going to like that, but this is where the one place where they shine is in detecting this nonsense. Any place where evil shines, Heathen Dog doesn't go. Fair enough. All right. Um, all right. So uh, side effects and destination. You can see right here. Uh, right dimension, wrong location. Bad luck, wrong dimension. You get all these little rolls here to find out where you end up. Oh, optional incapacitation table. Because everybody wants to be incapacitated, right? Go ahead and roll me some percentile dice just because I want to have fun in this with this one. 26. So not only do you take some more damage, you landed unconscious. In addition to being battered and bruised, the character is knocked unconscious for 2d6 minutes. Well, it's hardly a terrible fate. There could be extenuating circumstances. I don't know. You land on his polymorph world and somebody sees you there as food. Or you land on you land uh, some kind of lake of fire yeah. and you're, you're, you're sleeping on lava. Yeah. Well, you won't be sleeping very long. You'll be dead. Yeah. Serious head trauma, permanent ISP loss, a phobia. We all like getting phobias in the game. That's actually one of my favorite things about Palladium is is the not because I like to use it a lot, but the fact that it's there in a meaningful way, the uh the lasting effects like your phobias and so forth. So mm -hmm. all right. So you can see a whole bunch of different uh, uh tables you can roll on to find how off course you are. Yeah, the elemental plane of water. That's a fun place to accidentally end up, right? Sure. Start drowning. And I'm just scrolling through. You can't read it. I get it because I'm rolling through kind of fast. But uh, the, the, that's all the, the maelstrom. Now let's look at the displacement storm. And I got to be honest, I did read these, but I don't remember each one of these. So I'm going to have to read the first paragraph here. The energy between dimensions is usually stable except for brief periods that cause strain and instability. Like planetary alignments and seasonal peaks. The result, especially at ley lines and nexus points, is the opening of random dimensional port. Well, th we like that. Well, this is like Dinosaur Swamp, right? Most seasoned dimensional travelers know that while it is usually only a step or two to get to the other side of a rift, this distance can stretch from a few yards to almost a mile. During these high peak periods of magical energy and dimensional instability, shifters and those who understand the ebb and flow of the ley lines or study astronomy and planetary alignments also know about displacement storms and other dimensional anomalies. The casual adventurer, however, knows nothing of them and doesn't have a chance of detecting. OK, this isn't the paragraph I want to read, apparently. Uh, I'm not going to keep reading here, but uh, dimensional storms are. I, I honestly, I, I forget what these are. I apologize, folks. But again. I didn't write down notes, so 
a time standstill when they go inside. Yep, I got nothing. Oh, go, go ahead and roll the percentile dice. Let's just see what yeah. happens with okay. your dimension displacement storm. Eight. I always find one paragraph in here that's worth reading. Nothing! Or is there? The wisps of magic energy overhead move and undulate as if something has just rushed by and disturbed. And what was that? The, uh, that just brushed against your cheek. The wind? Is there wind in this frightening black calm? Is it your imagination or something real? Quit asking questions and get the blazes out of there. Whew, that wasn't so bad. There you go. A little You're, scary, you... but uh, don't be a little bitch and it'll be fine. All right, what's the next one? Nest of nest of spiders. That was the next one. <laughs> well, no, no, I meant, I meant dimensional <laughs> vortex. <laughs> Anomaly found at Leyline Nexus points is a dimensional vortex. A D vortex is best compared to a whirlpool at sea. That's ten times worse. Is made of magic and transdimensional energy. I mean, it's just perfect for his setting. Everything within a certain radius of the D vortex is sucked in. It's a vacuum that is incredibly strong, and few things can escape its pull. When the phenomenon was first studied by shifters and temporal raiders, the popular theory was that the other end of the dimensional vortex must end in a rift or dimensional portal that opens up into the vacuum of space, or some sp It's a wormhole, right? Sure. Well, they were wrong. It's an odd oh, no. anomaly that is not limited to dimensions with vacuums or the realm of outer space. This is fortunate for anyone who might get sucked into and shot out of a dimensional vortex. I just, you know, sometimes the words you use have meaning. Mm -hmm. sucked into and shot out of all right got it that's, sounds that's, sounds violent it sounds very unintended also doesn't it yeah uh -huh. so instead of appearing in a vacuum where they would most likely die victims of a d vortex can appear in any number of dimensions oh so it just shoots you so it is a wormhole it's a wormhole to other dimensions all right give me give me a percentile roll damn it sixty Okay, we'll get to that in a second. When a dimensional vortex first appears, everything in a 500-foot, well, that's actually not that big, radius of the devouring rift is drawn into it. Only creatures that make a roll to save of 17 or higher manage to avoid being drawn into it. Oh, by the way, no, no I should have probably read this parenthetical here. No bonuses apply. Straight die roll only. Straight up die roll. You need a 17, 18, 19, or 20, or you're going for a ride. 20% yeah, chance. Good luck, folks. Uh, those that are successful manage to. Uh, those that are successful. Uh, those are some manage to either be grabbed by a tree. Oh, there we go. Okay, you managed to grab a tree, something solid that did not get sucked in, got out of range in time, or simply had a miraculous bit of good luck. I remember when I read this uh, yesterday that I struggled with that sentence there too. I was just reading to myself. Okay, failed roll to save. All right. Uh, roll yeah, I'm, we're not going to look at all this other stuff here. You can look at uh, the other things that happen for damage and so forth. You roll the 60. A temporal void. Oh, that's great. The Woo! dimensional vortex connects into a temporal void, a small pocket dimension that is totally out of sync with time, like a time hole. Anyone caught in the temporal void only feels as if they're stuck for 1d4 minutes. However, time passes much faster in the outside world. Roll on the following table. <laughs> of course, 64. 64? So, actually, 3D, six hours passed. That's not so bad. That's not so bad, yeah. That's All right. So bad. You get the idea of how the, the dimensional yeah. vortex works. Okay, dimensional creators we're going to talk about in the next video. I don't think that there was anything else I wanted to talk about in this one, because this was pretty straightforward. It's going to be the next video where I do a little bit of skipping. So, uh, I apologize for not having this memorized or having good notes on these. I just didn't have time to write the notes. But you get the idea of the dangers of traveling through dimensional uh, space. So, right. and we got Question. some questions, Chat comments, here. concerns. Uh, Walter says a parallel dimension can be an infinite dimension or a pocket dimension, depending on what it's paralleling. Correct. Absolutely correct. Yeah. Yes. That it, I think it almost says that word for word in there at some point. Too. Mix this with aliens unlimited, but limit a few options. Act, pff, yeah. You can mix it with a lot of stuff. Yep. You're gonna have to, you have to limit some options. Weird guy comes with knowing my player group, they would want a dimension where they're the strongest fighters ever, and that dimension is sex god pantheon. <laughs> hey, you can have that, but remember, everybody would be that then. Yeah, then every, everybody, when they got into my dimension, if it was ruled by sex god, they would be a sex god. That sounds pretty good, actually. Or they'd be a cartoon because we've seen that in TV shows and movies all the time where you get another dimension and it's a cartoon dimension. Yep. You know what? Or the vice versa, the cartoon dimension. Yeah. That's, that's doable. That's doable. You have the heathen dog anime dimension. You want that. You really want that because it's hand drawn anime by 
by people who are giving up years of their life, you know, drawing cell by did, cell. Did you the- did you read the roles for yours? I think yours is the Netflix bad CGI anime. No, stop it. <laughs> All right, voice of one says upon entering the heathen dimension, it automatically changed the character into a Gungan. No, <laughs> no. You he meant to write Gundam. Gundam. Yeah, and that's perfect, and that's great, but not a gung, not a Gungan. <laughs> uh, weird guy says, well, as a card carrying evil DM, why did you tell your player group the odds? Let them figure it out. Oh yeah, don't, don't tell them about leyline storms. Like someone will say, oh, there was a leyline storm three days ago. You're like, oh, okay, good. Then there probably won't be one now. Shoo. And then they roll their 20 percent and all sad <laughs> then uh weirdest dimension we traveled into rifts was a natural dyson sphere there was a star in the middle of the sphere we lived on the surface on the inside surface and endless dirt in all directions it was also never night the real bad news was the star was dying that that's a mean All that DM, sounds like, um, imagine if you've got to hey uh we're only halfway around the world we got to get to the other side of the world that's as big as the solar system <laughs> yeah well it's it's a it's as big as uh whatever whatever the diameter of 92 million miles away from the sun all the way around everywhere as a globe yeah if you're just encapsulating earth that's i like suppose a, that's yeah. like a billion earths i don't know it's that's huge that's absolutely huge. You're not making that unless you can teleport. Wasn't there one? I thought there was one from Darius. I wanted you to, or is that? Oh, there is one, but I didn't think it fit here. Uh, it's right here. Oh yeah, no, no I, I wanted to actually uh, okay. talk about that. That's fine. I, I I get why you didn't put it up there. If you consider covering The Witcher, Cyberpunk, Red, or, or 2020, uh, Cyberpunk 2020, yes, I don't have Red. I don't really care to have it. Witcher again. That that's. That's possible. That's all I can say. Is this possible? I don't have it, but it's possible. We can cover a bunch of different things. I, which is probably not going to happen, but Cyberpunk 2020 is definitely a possibility because I actually like Cyberpunk 2020. So, so anyway, yeah, I, I understand why you thought that was out of place, and uh, but I just wanted to address it while we could. So with that, uh, oh, here we go. Uh, next video is going to be OCCs and those critters that you saw, and depending on how I feel, if I want to do a third video or not, we might cover actual megaverse of dimensions especially since i don't know them that well and i don't know if it warrants its own segment but we'll find out uh, in the next video